Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today we're going to do a species spotlight on a fish that is very dear to my heart. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay guys, so this tank here houses my four pea puffers, a fish that has many common names, some of which include the pygmy puffer, the Indian puffer, the dwarf puffer, and there are many more. But the Latin name of this, guys, is the Curigarino Tetra. It's on the bottom of the screen now. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it uh, because I've already tried to do that about 10 times and failed every time. But uh, other than that, luckily they have lots of common names, so we don't need to try to uh, pronounce that mouthful. I would put these guys in the intermediate category for care. They have a few little finicky things about them which hopefully we can clear up today and set you on the right path. But to get started with, these guys come from southwest India and they are critically endangered in the wild. So I do think it's really important that we learn as much as we can about these guys, attempt to reproduce them and that way we can keep them in the hobby so that we can do what we can to stop uh, un unfortunately overfishing which is, a, which is happening due to the popularity of this fish in the hobby. Habitat loss is also going a long way to unfortunately putting these guys in a bit of pr a predicament. But because they are super cute and in parts of the world quite cheap, uh, you can see why overfishing could be an issue. Luckily in Australia, we don't see the prices that you do see in the United States, you know, for three to five dollars or something like that. Unfortunately down here, we're talking about a few hundred dollars per puffer, so um, it can get quite expensive. Um, but that's because we have strict uh, import laws whereby it's prohibited to actually import pea puffers into Australia. As such, supposedly only broodstock of pea puffers are in Australia, so it's estimated that there could be only hundreds, uh, of which I feel like I'm very privileged to have four of them in my care. They are called the pea puffer for a reason. They do get approximately the size of a pea, funny enough. Uh, that's 1.4 inches or just over three centimeters. So they are quite small. Um, unfortunately as well, they will fare a lot better in a heavy, heavily planted tank. Uh, so you may not be able to actually see them all the time. For that reason, I prefer to put them in a longer but shallower aquarium so they don't have the certain uh, width to be able to hide more or so in but they still have the distance to be able to escape each other because they do like to sort of nip and spar with each other and stuff like that. There is a general rule of thumb which says for the one pea puffer you can uh, have them in a five gallon aquarium or 20 litres and for every pea puffer after that you have to add an additional three gallons or 12 litres. So by that logic in this four pea puffer situation I should technically have them in a minimum of 56 litres in my case, we're well above that. If you are lucky enough to be able to choose the sex for these guys, if you find some full grown ones, it is best to choose a single male and many females. But unfortunately, a lot of the times these guys come for sale at a very young age, so they're generally unsexable until you get them home and condition them up. I have found them to have pretty interesting behavior. The first uh, anecdote I'll give you is that just like many other puffers, they can move their eyes independently. So you will often see them scouting two items at once. And this makes them really great hunters. Because of this and because of their really keen eyesight, they're actually one of the rare fish that can see outside of the aquarium as well. So they will certainly get to know you as the owner and some people find it pretty easy to be able to train these guys to feed by hand using tongs or whatever. Unfortunately, on the topic of feeding, they are a little bit finicky on the food. Mine here, I've only taken frozen food and one type of prepared food, which is the Hikari Vibrobite. Uh, so if your pea puffer isn't even taking a single prepared food, it is still important to give them a varied frozen food diet, including things like Daphnia, brine shrimp, bloodworms, and the like. They will also readily attack live foods as well. That's why I keep lots of pond snails in this aquarium. Ram pond snails are another good one. Although some people warn against Malaysian trumpet snails because they are a little bit of a choking hazard, though I haven't had any experience with that myself. I do also keep them with some algae shrimp here, and I thought that they might be a chance for being predated as well, but it looks like they've fared okay. And actually, in most cases, the shrimp are now bigger than the puffers, which is kind of funny to see. They are sexually dimorphic once they come into age and you'll be able to tell the sex quite easily because males will have a bright yellow belly. Females will have more of an opaque yellow to white belly and there'll also be differences in the spots and markings. 
Males generally possess a dark stripe on their bodies and females do not. And males are typically a darker golden sort of green where females are much more light and vibrant. Another good observation is if the ma males have wrinkly appearance around the eyes and females don't, so you can look out for that as well. In terms of tank requirements, these guys can accept a huge pH variant. So from anywhere between 6.5 to 8.5 pH, they'll be able to handle. So lots of options there. As always, don't swing it aggressively. And if you do want to go from one to the other, then make sure you change it gradually over time and allow the fish to acclimate. And in terms of temperature, 74 to 82 Fahrenheit or 23 to 28 Celsius will fare them just fine as well. These are a true freshwater puffer, so there's no need for any salt addition, brackish water or so forth. And also they don't generally like a lot of flow. They get sort of pushed around the water column if there's a lot of flow. So make sure you just give them gentle flow so that they're not um, you know, stressed out. In terms of tank mates, I certainly recommend at the cost that we pay for these guys in Australia, maybe don't keep them with anything just to minimize your risk. Although if you do wish to keep them with other types of fish, you want to keep them with small, um, fast moving fish and things without long flowing fins because these guys certainly do like to nip. They are semi-aggressive and they are a little bit territorial. So I would recommend species only, but that's just me. If you have to keep something in there, maybe something like an ember tetra might be okay. All right, so now we've had them for a little while. They're conditioned up, they're sexable. You know that you have both uh, male and female and you're ready to try and breed. What I would do is just keep the temperature around that 79 Fahrenheit, sort of 26, 27 degrees Celsius mark, get a heavily planted aquarium and give um, a little piece of java moss or a sort of semi-caved area. And what's going to happen is the male is going to chase around the female until she's ready and then they're going to go and spawn in a small secluded area in the aquarium. So that's why heavily planted is a must. They must feel safe so that they can have a little area there and then they're going to immediately try and cover over the eggs so that you never see them. So you do want to have a keen eye to make sure that you do catch them in the breeding act. But I'll do a future video on breeding these guys um, and there are plenty of other great ones available online. So there you go guys, hopefully you enjoyed this species spotlight on my dwarf puffers, pea puffers, Indian puffers, whatever you want to call them. They are a super cute, uh, chunky little number that will zip around the aquarium all day and uh, just give you hours of fun. So if you like the video, please help me out by giving that like button a big old smash. Hit the sub and ding the notification bell if you like what you see. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.